to the GSL Code A. We are in our final set of matches for the night. Parting, having a unique celebration there at the end after taking out a live 2-1. Not that unique. Yeah, he stole like, it. As soon as I said unique, I was like, well, actually... It's pretty cool and I like it. I really like that he pulled the key and that was, of course, intended. And I would really love... I saw a few pictures during the break and he looked pretty stylish in those. I think they showed in, in the pictures they actually had a, a few shots that we did not see on camera. It was pretty cool and I really hope that someone is going to make that gif and compare it to the original celebration from Commander Keen. Let's see who is more stylish. And he really could pull off the glasses. That's something that a lot of people can't do. Me yeah. included, I look completely stupid with them. I look so silly. I, I don't look good in glasses either. Well. I Lean need those, th those sporty sunglasses to style. That's, that works with me, but <laughs> those aviator thingies... It's uh, not easy. I look horrible. Not everybody looks good in those. Well, Leenok versus Ryong. This is going to be our final match. This is going to be a good one. I think we may be in for a long one, as both these players fairly macro-oriented. Leenok occasionally will throw a wrench into the gears with a Baneling Roach attack. Oh, with a specifically designed strategy, I still can't believe that he pulled a six pool against the life just a few weeks ago. And here we have them, both of them. Leenok to the left side of the map, and to the right we have Slayer's Ryong. Yeah. And Alive, of course, we talked a bit about parting in Alive, and Alive came back from MLG this morning. At 6 o'clock he arrived. Therefore still a little bit shaky. Leenok is in such good shape now. He's in great shape. He showed it in the GSTL. He showed it also at the WCS preliminaries, where he was able to secure himself a spot. I asked him in the lobby chat right now if he was tired, and he said, no, I'm not tired. And Linux said, yeah, I didn't think so. Looking forward to seeing what these guys are going to show us today. The um, first map is going to be Cloud Kingdom. We are ready to go, ladies and yep. gentlemen. Zerg versus Terran, FXO versus Slayer. It is Linux up against Ryang here at the GSL Code A. Round three. To the bottom left, we have him. Zerg player for the FXO team, the Octopus. It is. FXO Lino. There he is. The funny thing is that they already faced each other in uh, Codas. I will just come back to this in a few seconds. First, let us introduce the Terran player to the top right. This is in the blue. The Terran for the Slayers team. One and only. Slayers Ryang. Ryang was part of the group in uh, which Linok played in Codas this season. And he actually won. He took Linok down with 2-0. Didn't lose a single map against him. Yeah. And from this point on, uh, Linox started after he finished the Codes group. And in the Codes group, he, uh, of course, did not do all this well. If he, if it would be different, he wouldn't be here. So he lost to Teja, he lost to Ryang, but since then, he hasn't lost a single match against Terran. He defeated Bomber, he defeated Dream, he defeated Jakchi. A lot of good Terran players on his path, and every single one of them fell short to this ancient creature. <laughs> It's a close relative to the Graken, as we pointed out earlier in yeah. the GSTL cast. Oh, well, Ryung certainly has a lot of soul, man. And I think that... Whoa! See that eBay queued up there? That was really weird. I wonder what the plan was with that. I, don't th I think it must have been a mistake. I mean, we saw air weapons accidentally research today. But <laughs> no, uh, Lee not going for gas before third base. This is... This can indicate aggression. When the, uh, you know, scientists have observed that when the octopus takes a gas before the three minute mark, he oftentimes uh, goes for a big attack. <laughs> I'm 
sorry, but when you started with scientists, I immediately started to think about the Discovery Channel and now about the mating habits of the octopus. And they are just pictures in my head that I want to get out of there as fast as possible. Don't ever do that again to me. Well, I'll tell you that... No, 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 no details. Only one, there's only one lean octopus, so... Does have no uh, no reproductive capabilities, uh, so don't you. worry about that. Just putting my mind at ease here. It will become extinct uh, as soon as Lenoch retires from programming. That okay. will happen at an unknown time. All right. Scientists predict maybe eight to ten years in the future. Okay. I I'm so glad that you have in depth all of, of this. I studied the lean octopus actually uh, in my spare time. Uh, I used to to observe him, stay in the same house as him for a while. Well, he certainly is careful with his overlords, isn't he? One to the top left, and uh, we already have a few marines. Just had a quick look where exactly could this overlord be. Can I take it down? The speed, as you pointed out, is a little bit faster, and Lenok is still getting gas here. It's not like he stopped mining. He still gets a few ga a little bit of gas, so he can certainly put off some pressure here. Usually with the Roach and Baning attack, you start roughly at 36 so, uh, drones. That's where you stop. There are different ways that you can play it. You can also just go for Roach Roar and do a little bit of Roach Pressure. Yeah. But let's see what exactly he has in mind here. He definitely has one of these in mind. He hasn't it started a lair yet, so... It could also be, yeah, exactly. It could be a little bit of a faster lair. I kind of doubt it at this point because we... There's no way... Well, he could have started it already and he didn't. 26 Harvesters, 8 buildings. That puts him at 34. Let's see if this is now... It's the fast lair. Here we go. Wow. Uh, kind of a weird timing, a little later well, than it could have been. He dedicates the minerals first to the drone production, and as soon as those two lava um, periods that he had are fully droned up, he starts with the layer tech, so that's why it's a bit delayed. And with this extra gas, he can actually start his layer tech. It's not like uh, the extra gas he's banking up now is wasted. He's going to need that to make a sp spire, potentially. Um, I don't think we're going to see him go Nidus, but it's possible. But not with the three additional gases being added, that just doesn't make sense. Oh, he tries to save that SCB. Oh. Nah. He won't get it. He tries. We have the Banshee now, of course, for Ryang, as we see on the production tab. And Lenok, he will have with a fast lair, so, of course, a very fast possibility or option to get for Overlords in the game and uh, Overseers. And then he has Detection. So you should be able to defend here, especially because he already has three Queens. There's no third base, though. A very early Spire. It's not a live spire, but it's no, definitely yeah. an early spire. Very early spire. This could be something that catches Lenok, or rather, uh, Ryung off guard. Ryung getting a slightly delayed third command center here. Skipping the cloak, uh, which is, is something, as you mentioned, is going to be good for him because he's facing a, a fast lair. And that means that the Overseer will be quite accessible. With this Banshee, we'll see if he scouts the, uh, if he scouts the spire. That's going to be really important to know. That's uh, something he, he wants to see ASAP. This is the first time he's going to see that there's no third. And this kind of should give him a hint already. No third? Well, okay, what exactly are you going to do? You're on two bases. I'm on two bases. You know that. You've scouted me. What are you going to do now? And the Hellion's still going in, trying to take down a few of those three tumors. Of course, the Queen is ready. God save the Queen. And here comes the Banshee. Banshee on its way. The Overseer is morphing. He will lose a few drones, though. Yeah. There's no cloak. No cloak and no hope beyond two drone kills here. He's going to be able to use this to clean up watchtowers if he wants to. Zerli run by. It goes off. He's got a Banshee and two. Now four Hellions to defend. He's going to lose one Hellion. Where the Mutalist is, though? He doesn't build them. He concentrates on his Zerglings and uh, they, he could build eight. There he and goes. There eight, maybe a ninth. No. Just eight. Should start with uh, the plus one attack upgrade, I guess, if he wants to commit later on. And there it is, plus one attack. Yeah, the plus one attack is so important. It's basically the cost of a muta to get that out there. And with this, you can just make every muta so much stronger. Definitely worth it. If you go for this hit and run style, this is exactly what you need. Just go in, dish out as much damage as possible, and then retreat. That's what you want. The overlord to the top right is being taken out by a Viking as we speak, but in the middle of the map, the uh, thing is that this Banshee is just completely helpless against the Mulers. Like, well, I haven't trained my missiles yet, I can't actually shoot air. Yeah. Uh, not yet. 
That would be scary, man, if Banishes could attack air. Do you remember a time where Cloak required Fusion Core to research? Do you remember insane. when we talked about the Blue Flame uh, Banshees? I would switch race immediately. <laughs> oh, that turret. Cancel. And Lenok is being not only a little bit annoying, but doing also some damage. No. And he's committing quite heavily to the Munalists right now. He's getting more and more of them. And he can afford to third, take the third base. At this point in time, he has the map control. He knows what his opponent's doing. The Munalists are fast. They are mobile. They gave him the ability to see what exactly Rung is doing. And he forces his opponent to defend. Every single time that Lenok hits the natural of the main base, Ryung has to come over with his Marines, has to defend. So Lenok is fully aware of what's going on. He controls the map, can safely take a third base. And he just now starts to prepare, putting all the chess pieces pieces into place, the Baneling Nest, plus one, plus one for his ground units, a few Zerglings doing this really well, while Rian is kind of forced to uh, keep his command center the third on the high ground and needs to get a few more Marines, needs to get combat shield before he can push out, take the third and uh, then maybe try to take the middle of the map and uh, advance to uh, attack Lino. Yeah, The Lean Octopus here is chasing down his prey, he's trying to find these Hellions, the Hellions have been spotted, he's on the chase. Oh, he misses him. Ryung has to prove that he's a shark and not a goldfish. He needs to prove it indeed. And the Lean Octopus has multiple ways of hunting Hellions. Does not have to attack them by air. Now, the Lean Octopus has been known to humiliate and harass his opponent before killing him. And this is exactly what he's going to try to do here. Ah, uh, the Supply Depot is already gone. A few seconds earlier, Ryung was Supply Blocked. And now we have a lot of upgrades for both of these players. Plus two, plus two. That's where Ryung currently shines. He's certainly showing his teeth, definitely not a goldfish here, but is he a shark? We're going to find out. Has to cancel the command center now. And this is exactly what you're talking about with the harass, the plus one really showing through here with these mutas, just picking off structures, tanks, whatever he can find. When you actually see a Zerg player that researches the armor upgrade, or you see him in the armor upgrade, you know you're in trouble because that's when he really wants to commit. He wants to fight. But as we speak, we have the plus two attack upgrade being researched. Speed for the Zer for the Banelings, a fourth base being built. Lino playing this very well. Ryang though not losing too much. He had to cancel the command center, he lost the supply depot, but he still defends well. It's not like Lino had the chance to get into the main base and take down a ton of STDs. By the way, um I'm going to point out, Leenok keeps an Overseer in his control group with his Mutas. I think that's kind of cute. Brutal uh, style? Yeah. What we don't have, though, are Thors. And he really needs a few of those. Ryang, if he really wants to stick with this combination, Thors would be so important. He definitely needs at least two uh, if he wants to do this. Only going for Siege Tanks and Marines is very tough to pull off. You have to babysit the Siege Tanks the entire time with the Marines. And the Mutalists are fast. They can just circle the army and try to find an opening. One weak Siege Tanks, and he's down. Yeah. It's one focus. With the Mutalists that he has, he focused once and uh, the Siege Tank is gone. That's 70 Mutalists. He's going up to 147 Zerglings right now, making 18 Banelings. He knows he's ahead in supply and he's going to start to trade. He's going to continue to attack. Uh, we'll see a lot more Banelings than this, I guess. Yeah, I think so too. Getting a tank, maybe? No, but no Mutalists lost. Yeah, but this is exactly what we just talked about. There they are. Additional Banelings are being built. He really needs some Thors. Yeah, none at all in production right now. Just the uh, additional Siege Tank. 2-2 is about to finish. He will be ahead in upgrades for a while. If Lenok decides to go for a big attack, that could be problematic. I love this. Nest style trying to pick off some That's of these the medevacs. There's the Thor. It might be a bit too late because Lenok is ready. He's at 200 supply. He's waiting for the second attack upgrade for the Mutalist. Maybe even for plus two, plus two for ground. And here come the Banelings from the left. The Mutas from the right as well as some additional Zerglings. The Marines have nowhere to run. Ryung is in trouble. He sure is. Lenok is sandwiching him. The Lenoctopus is hungry. He is hungry. He's taken out his prey. He's had done... I mean, he's, he's done playing with his food, man. It's time to chow down. Cancels the command center. He's got a few Marines left, but that is so many Banelings. There's no way to split against those more Banelings than Marines out here right now. Still 14 Mutalists left. He takes down the third base. Lino with the transition starts with the infestation pit right away. 14 additional drones. Look at the minimap. Creep everywhere. Taking the fourth base. Yes, that's a drop at the bottom right, but so far this dropship did not accomplish anything. Yep, he's gonna maybe force these drones away. He might be able to force the hatchery down with his plus two weapons, but Lenok sending Mutas and Zerglings home. And 
No, I don't think he's going to get this hatch. There's too many Mutas. Targets a few of them down, but at the end of the day, he gets totally pummeled there. And 3-3, three, three, halfway done for Ryung. That's something Lee has not started yet. He does not have the Hive. He just got the Infestation Pit, as you mentioned. He's going to need that. There's the Hive. Pathogen Glands as well as 11 additional Banelings Morph. And Lee Nock's going to be on the defensive for a little while here. Hold his fourth base, get his tech going. He knows he has the better army, but he can't attack Ryung right now. Ryung's economy is so hurting here. The problem for Lee Nock is not that he might not be able to attack. The, he, the problem is I, rather that Ryung can't move out. Yeah, he can't. And he is he's in really big trouble. He doesn't have a third, as you pointed out. His economy is weak. He's up against an opponent who spread creep throughout the entire map, who even now covers the potential fourth base for the Terra player with this creep. So as soon as Ryang moves out, he has to fight on creep. He has to give Linux a little bit of time to actually prepare. The bank for Linux is there. The only reason why he's not maxed out is that he chose not to. He chose to wait until his hive tech is gone. Uh, it's, it's, it's done. And of course he has the Pathogen Glance, he has the Infestors. Ryang needs, I don't want to say a small miracle, but he needs something. Maybe a drop, but Linux looked so safe against drops thus far. Takes down another another Viking. This is exact another medivac. This is exactly what we said earlier. He needs something, and it's just not there. There are no Thors. Nothing that he can help him. He's having to use multiple scans here to clear up these things, and I mean he doesn't have the resources to afford you in order to use these scans. The creep is spreading into his third base. He may have to scan to stop creep from being under his base soon if he doesn't deal with this. Forty-six more lanes on the way. Greer Spire and Ultralis Cavern. Both. To the right side of the map we have a drop play, but there are links, there are bane links. There's even infestors ready. Ah, uh, Linux just moves them out now. Didn't see it. That's fine, as long as he leaves those infestors there, he will be able to clean this up. He and has it's vision. Not, it's not that the young plays bad. Ryang has the upgrades and everything. The problem is more that Linux is so far ahead and was for quite a while now that he can dictate what the game, what Ryang is actually allowed to do. Yeah, the economy that he has over Ryang just really, really dictates things. He just has so much more bank. Look at his bank. 2,000 versus about 700. He's making three ultras, 15 more banes going down. Medivac gets dropped, and bye, by bye, dropped bye. I mean... <laughs> Drop down to a clip, and this is a sick engagement for Lenok! Good bungles here! He bungles everything basically, and is now 60 supply ahead. It immediately starts his production again. He's maxed out. Adrenal glance on its way. All these plus three upgrades. He's moving in. He's not kidding around. He is finishing this. Oh, those bungle grows. GG. Lenok takes game one against Ryung. Licking his chops, man. But he did order a second serving, and it's going to be served up to him on the next map. We'll see if he can chow down on it. Yeah, Ryang certainly needs to. Uh, I don't know. What does Ryang have to do? He has to grow some teeth. He has to show him, well, it's not, buddy. It was well played. You had a good run on Cloud Kingdom, but it's over now because I will show you right now that I am the predator in this game and not you. I'm really curious to see what the map is. Is it going to be Antigua, perhaps? No, Entomb Valley. Ryang was, of course, also at MLG. He faces the same fate that Alive had faced. Yeah, going to be a little bit fatigued. You know, I asked him earlier if he was tired. He said no, but it may just be, you know, his pride talking here. It's not going to be an easy match for him. I mean, Linok is looking so dominant. We talked uh, that he's about his shape, his current shape. He is on top of his game. Well, Linok in that last game just dominated. Total control with the Mutas. Ryung having no chance to move out, no chance to be aggressive. And time after time, he just wasn't able to, to to really accomplish much at all. And Lenok had the whole base, he had or he had all the base he needed, he had all the creep he needed. His upgrades were behind, but he, once he won a few key engagements, he just was able to sit back, relax, shut down drop after drop, attack after attack, and Ryung just ran out of money, lost that third base, and from there, things were, were pretty much over for him. Let's see how the channel player is going to react to this. Both of them uh, were in Code S. They were in the same group, actually. But back then, Ryang won the series with 2-0. Now it's time to see if Leenok can get revenge. He's already up one game. The Lean Octopus, will he chow down again? He's up against Ryang from the Team Slayers. He's in the GSTL Finals, but can he 